Now let's use a hypothetical example to show you how the CPI is calculated. Uh, you would find it's very straightforward. Okay, and um, this hypothetical example would probably remind you of what we discussed in chapter ten, uh, GDP chapter. Okay, but here you would find some differences. Now let's check this out. Uh, again, in this hypothetical economy, um, people only consume two goods. Cokes and cheeseburgers. Okay, and uh, for each good, uh, we already have the price and the quantity for three years: 2000, 2018, and 2019. Okay, and um, here I would suggest you pausing the video and think about the difference or differences between this table. In the table we used back in chapter 10. Okay, you can try your best to come up with as many differences as possible. Now, here the major difference is the quantity. Okay, you would find that in chapter 10 when we talk about uh, output or GDP, uh, the quantities are different over time okay but here we intentionally or artificially keep the quantity constant simply because the focus of this chapter is the change in price okay remember when we talk about the real gdp in chapter 10 we said that you know we don't want any influence from change in price levels so we keep the price constant over time, right? Here, we're doing this in the opposite. The prices can be changed over time, like here from $1 to $2 in 2018 and $0.50 cents in 2019. Or the price of cheeseburgers, $2 uh, in 2000 and $2.5 in Eighteen in four dollars in nineteen, right? It varies across time, but the quantities of cokes and cheeseburgers stay the same. Okay, because if the quantity also varies, then it you know any change, um, it, it will be hard for us to uh, focus just upon the change in price. Okay. Now remember, we said here we want to measure the cost of living, okay? And we all already said that you know people consume only these two goods. So again, pause the video and try your best to calculate the cost of living. Here, um, I believe it's very straightforward. You know, for example, when you look at the year two thousand, the price of coke is one dollar, and people purchase fifty. Cokes. So the total amount of money they spend on Cokes would be 1 times 50. That gives us $50, right? And then they spent $2 on each cheeseburger and they purchased 100 cheeseburgers. So the total amount is going to be $200, right? So in that year, the total cost of living is going to be $250. Okay, 50 on coke and 200 on cheeseburger and use a similar way you can figure out 2018 the cost of living is 350 dollars okay 100 dollars spend on coke and 250 spend on cheeseburgers uh, in 2019 the total cost of living is 425 dollars okay now once we get these three numbers we can go ahead and talk about how to calculate consumer price index. Okay. Uh, CPI is the change in the cost of living relative to the base year. Again, this may sound familiar to you because as I just mentioned, back in chapter 10, when we talk about real GDP, we use the idea of base year. 
right? We said we pick the base year and then keep the price the same as the base year, okay? No matter which year we're looking at um, uh, or calculating the output, right? Here we also need the base year. Now let's check out how it works. Uh, mathematically, if we want to figure out the CPI for current period, we use the CPI in current, uh, I'm sorry, we use the cost of living current period divided by the cost of living in the base year and multiplied by 100 to get the percentage. Okay. Now, on the previous slides, we already find the cost of living in these three years, right? So here, Again, pause the video in trying to calculate the CPI for three for these uh, three years. Okay, you can simply just plug in the numbers into the formula here um, on the slide and to get the CPI. All right, so for uh, the year 2000, uh, if we pick the first year as the base year, okay. Uh, then you would find that cost of living in the current period and cost of living in the base year are going to be exactly the same, $250, right? And then um, the CPI would be 100, okay? And for 2018, uh, what you need to do is uh, the cost of living that year, which is 350, divided by the base year's cost of living, 250. So you would find that the CPI is 140. Similarly, you can find the 2019 CPI, uh, which is 170. Okay. Again, the math is uh, uh, should be very straightforward, right? Now, what's important? What's more important here is the economic interpretation of these numbers, what they mean. Okay. Um, for example. If we look at um, 2019 CPI 170, what does it mean? Okay, remember uh, in the base year 2000, the CPI is 100, right? Uh, in 2019, it's 170. So if we use 170 minus 100, we're gonna get 70, right? This means compared to the base year. The price level in 2019 increases by 70%. Okay, remember these are all percentages. Okay, so uh, the difference between these two numbers would be the uh, percentage points increase. Okay, and similarly, 140 means compared to the base year, the price level in 2018 increases by 40%, which is 140 minus 100. Okay, so from the CPI numbers, we will know immediately uh, how much the price level of the current period increases in comparison to the base year. All right, and we also know that you know the base year or base period uh, CPI should always be 100. Okay. Again, you go back to this formula, you will realize that you know um, if the current period is the base year or base period, then these the numerator and denominator are going to be exactly the same, right? So the CPI should always be 100. Could CPI fall below 100? Think about this. I would like to leave this for you guys as an uh, assignment. Okay, and later during our virtual meeting, we can talk about this. All right, I can give you a clue. Uh, in reality, the U.S. government actually uses three years as base period. So it's not base year, it's base period. Okay, uh, they actually use 1982, 83, and 84 as the base period. Okay. The reason they use three years uh, so that they can take the average, they can even out any outlier, any single event which might have a strong influence upon the economy in that year. 
Okay, so the average will help us exclude these kind of outlier influence. Okay, now think about that. You know, 82, 83, 84 as the base year. Okay, and how would that help you answer this question? Could CPI fall below 100?